Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my series on Cura and how to set it up and use it. So let's go ahead and get started. So in my last video, I downloaded and installed a default profile. And I think as I pointed out when I was loading that profile, the community for Cura is excellent. It's a huge community. And so lots of people are regularly adding printer profiles. Now you have the ability to create a profile from scratch. And in my next video, we'll probably look at that. But today I just want to work with the profile I've already loaded. Now the best thing you can do either way is look through the profiles and identify a profile that is the closest to your printer. And then we can tweak from there. Now, in my case, I've loaded the default profile for the Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus, which right now is my most reliable printer. And we're going to start with that. Now there, there's a couple changes we're gonna make. We're going to go over here to the right-hand side and we're going to make sure we show custom. And basically I wanna show all settings. So I want all settings loaded. I'm also going to move this down a little bit and so right now I have all my settings showing, which for me is critical. And then we're going to start building our own profile. Now, the best thing you can do, in my opinion, is you start with an existing profile. These profiles, again, based on the community, are what the community believes is the best settings for the Ender 3 S1 Plus, whichever printer you're using. Now I have some settings I use. So I'm gonna start with quality. By default, I usually do a 0.2 layer height, and then I do a, an initial layer height of 0.32. And what that does is give me a little bit thicker base. Now, since I've made a change, you'll notice up here at the top, the save button's available. So let's go ahead and hit save. And I'm gonna save this as a new profile. So I'm gonna call this M3DP standard. So this will be my standard profile. Now for the line width, the line width in Cura is the wall thickness. I like my wall thickness at 0.5. At 0.5, that means that it's very easy for me to measure, and that gives me a little bit thicker walls. I found that it doesn't seem to really affect too negatively exactness or any of the measurements. So I feel pretty comfortable at this 0.5. Now, if I have a print that specifically says it needs a certain line width, of course I go with that, but most prints don't. So I like this. The other thing I like about it is I'm gonna know how thick the walls are really easily. If I go with three walls or three line widths, I know it's gonna be a millimeter and a half. So we're gonna make one other change here up in quality. I like to do that initial layer line width at 120%. Again, the whole point of the initial layer height and the initial line width is to give ourselves a better base. And again, I haven't noticed any real issues with accuracy. Now I finished updating quality and I just want to hit save. And that way I'm going to keep saving throughout. That way if I mess up or I accidentally close things, I can go back. So let's just hit save. And let's head to the next setting, which is walls. So I'm gonna close quality, shrink it down, and then expand walls. So I'm gonna do a wall thickness of 1.5. And what that means, again, that's 1.5 millimeters. So that's three walls. I'm gonna scroll down here and everything else I'm going to leave as is. Now there's the print thin wall setting, I've had some issues with that in the past, so I usually leave that turned off. And then let's, I'm gonna look at the setting under Z seems relative, and let me leave that turned off as well. So really the only change I wanna make is just make sure this wall thickness. Now, if I need a print, I need it to be really tough, maybe I'll up that to a wall thickness of two. So now let's save that, and we'll proceed on to the next settings. And top bottom, top skin layers, I'm gonna do a one, and scroll down here, and I wanna make sure there's five top layers, five bottom layers. I can, depending on what I wanna do, I can also change that to four, that's sorta of up to you. Scrolling down, I'm going to leave everything else as is. Hit save, and then let me head down to the next section, which is infill. 
Now, infill, that's typically what I change a lot, but I'll leave this for right now at 20. And I prefer the infill pattern cubic subdivision. When I look this up, cubic subdivision gives me a great balance between strength and, and toughness. Also, it's one of the quickest to print. So I'm going to do cubic subdivision, and then scroll down, and everything else I'm just going to leave as is. So again, hit save on material. I like, I'm going to say this is right now PLA. So I'm going to go, my print temperature is 205. My initial print temperature, I go 210. Initial printing temperature, again, 210. Might help to hit the right buttons. So 210. Final printing temperature, I'm going to leave that as 205. And I like the build plate at 65. Now flow, flow, you're going to actually have to do some calculations and you can use, there's a teaching tech website. There's several other websites, including my own, that have flow calibration. So you'll need to calculate that. But for right now, we'll leave it at 100% and scroll down here. Now a relatively new setting is gradual flow. I've tested that and I've discovered that if I have a bunch of small models on the plate, there's a limit. And when I hit that, let's just say I had a keychain I was printing and I wanted to do 20 on my plate, cure a wooden slice. I had to delete models down to 14 and then I could print. If I turned gradual flow off, then what basically happened was I could put as many on the plate as I, as I wanted. So I leave for right now, gradual flow enabled off. So let's hit our save and we'll go to speed. Now speed again is something you're gonna calibrate for. In my case, I usually run this printer at about 80. So I add 20 to all the values here. I'm gonna go down and just add 20 to all these values. I'm just ch changing these. And this is something again, you wanna test for to see how your printer behaves. And Z hop speed, I'll leave it five. Number of slow layers, two. That's fine. Enable acceleration control, I'll leave that on. I'm going to bump up the print acceleration to 800. Again, this is just from experience on my printer. I'll leave jerk control turned off. Go up to the top, save it. Travel, I'm going to. Look down here. All these values are all right. This is a direct drive printer. 0.8 is fine. These may be ones you want to calibrate for to check what you need to do. And again, the Teach Tech website, calibration website is really good, particularly for Cura for calibrating this. Let's just scroll down here. And I think everything else looks good. Didn't actually make any changes there. So I'm going to go to the next section, cooling. I'll leave this all by default. Something to look at with cooling. If you happen to have dual fans to cool your parts, you may want to adjust the fan speed. If you're just using one fan, I'd pretty much leave this as is. I wouldn't change anything. Go to support. On support, I initially turn support on and I make a couple changes here. I change this to touching build plate. I change the support pattern to grid. I scroll down and make sure all these are grid as well. Now I'm going to save this and that saves it with touching build plate on. I'm going to turn support off and save it again. Now what should happen is next time I turn support on, the touching build plate should be enabled because occasionally I forget that. That saved. And then the last one I really need to look at is bed plate adhesion. And so on bed plate adhesion, I just want it set to skirt. And line count three is fine. I'm actually going to change that. Leave that at three. My skirt height, I only want a skirt height of one. And let's hit save. So that right now is my how I do my default profile tuning. So it's fairly simple. Now my next video, I'm going to show how to enable for Clipper. So we, there's a couple extra settings we can do. And then 
also I'll work with you, show you how to create a profile from scratch. So until next time, I appreciate your time. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.